You've probably got a ton of synths on your computer that could help you make better beats. But the problem is that they have so many things in them that you have no idea how to use that you end up not using them to their full potential. I want to help you solve this problem. The goal today will be to show you what everything does in your plugins, how to find where everything is in your plugins, and some examples of these ideas as I go along. So let's get into it. Starting off, one important thing that you need to know is that most plugins work similarly to one another. They may have all their buttons and doodads organized differently, but fundamentally, the overall flow usually works like this. First, synths generate sounds, then they will give you ways to affect those sounds individually, then those sounds get combined together, and the synth gives you ways to affect the entire sound as a whole. Now this is a very simplified view, but it can really help you when you're trying to navigate your plugin to understand where everything is and what everything does. This is the map that we're going to follow whenever we use a synth. So let's cover the very first part of this map. Often synths generate multiple sounds and combine these sounds together to create something unique overall. Our first goal is to find where these multiple sounds are in our synth. So let's take a look at a few examples. Even if you don't have these specific plugins, you'll be looking for the same types of things no matter what you use. So in a plugin like Serum, for example, you can see that it says Oscillator A and Oscillator B. This is an example of a plugin that uses multiple sounds to create one sound. It has an A sound and a B sound that get played together. At times, these oscillators will be organized into different tabs, like an Omnisphere. If we click A, B, and C, we can see that we have different oscillators within each tab here. So if we take a listen to just sound A, that's what sound A is doing. And if we take a listen to just sound B, and together with both of them on, this is our finalized sound. Other more simple synths will only use one oscillator in order to create a sound. An example of this would be mini synth. Here you can see it only has one oscillator that we can use. And this is something else that you're going to want to look for when first using a plugin. Look for the actual waveforms and wave shapes. This is another clue telling you where your sounds are coming from. To go back into Omnisphere, we can see that this oscillator right here has a saw square waveform. And in Minisynth, here we have a drop down menu of the different types of waveforms that we can use. You will commonly see these types of shapes like saws, squares, triangles, and signs. So be on the lookout for those types of words specifically. If you find those, then you found the part of your plugin that is actually creating the sounds. Other synths will show these shapes and waveforms, but only visually. Here we can see the different waveforms on this wretched, horrible plugin. Now having said that, there will be other synths that don't actually use waveforms or wave shapes at all, and they generate sounds using samples. For example, if we go back into Omnisphere, one of the reasons why this synth is so popular is it not only has a synth section, where we have our usual typical types of waveforms and wave shapes, but it also has a sample section where we have tons of sounds that are meant to mimic actual instruments. Same thing with Expand here. This is using multiple samples here instead of wave shapes in order to generate the sound. So overall, this is step one in your flowchart. When trying to figure out where everything is in your synth, this is the first thing that you'll want to look out for. Figure out where the sound is being generated from. Look out for words like saw, square, waveform, oscillator, or sample, or try to find these wave shapes and waveforms visually. This will be a clue to find this section in your synth. If they use multiple sounds, hopefully they'll be organized where we have oscillator A, B, C, or 1, 2, 3, and so on. Other times your synth may just have one single sound that it uses. By the way, one tip that I find helpful is if I'm listening to a preset and it sort of sounds good, but there's a part of it that I don't really like, this is often the reason why. I'll go through these individual sounds one by one and just turn them off until I'm left with a sound that I actually do want and like. Moving on to step two, how to affect or change these individual sounds. This step is what most of the other dials and knobs in your synth are meant to do. Usually the oscillators or the sample area will just make up a small part of the overall plugin. And all the other dials are used to affect your sounds. And often this is where you can make some of your biggest changes to your sounds as well. The most common ones that you'll find in many synths are filters, pitch control, envelopes, and modulation. These consistently show up in most plugins. So let's first talk about what these settings are and how to figure out where these settings are in most of your plugins as well. Filters are probably the easiest to understand. I'm sure you've probably used one before. These allow you to take your sounds and change how many frequencies are coming through by adding a filter onto it. So for example, in Omnisphere, we have our filter right here. 
And filters are usually easy to find in your synths. You'll commonly see settings like cutoff and resonance, and these are settings that are common for filters. So if you ever see those in your plugin, you know that you're looking at the filter section. Or another dead giveaway is if you see the word filter. Typically that means you're, you're in the filter section. I commonly use this if I have a preset that I like, but there are areas that I don't need, maybe in the super high end or in the super low end. I'll just use a filter to get rid of those frequencies. So that's simple enough to understand, but before we move on to talking about pitch control, envelopes, and modulation, we might already have a problem here with our synth. Whether we're talking about filters or pitch control, envelopes, or modulation, some of these settings apply to the individual sounds, and some of these apply to the overall sounds, and it can be difficult to figure out which is which. In most synths, these settings will be organized and easier to understand. For example, in Omnisphere, like I mentioned, everything is put into tabs here. We have the different tabs for our different sounds, and all the settings within each tab are meant to change the individual sounds themselves. For example, this filter right here is just for the specific sound that we're currently in. We can hear it's just this layer that we're affecting with this filter. But then we have tabs outside of these oscillators, where we have settings that we can use to affect the overall sound, which is the last step in our flow. So for example, if I go into the main area, here you can see that we have a master filter. This is the filter that's going to be applied to the overall sound. So here's taking both of our individual sounds, A and B, and applying a filter onto everything. Another example is Iris. This is a plugin that I talked about that's super powerful for sampling. Link to that video is in the corner. Here we have a lot happening on this main window. But as you can see on the side, we have the master area and the sample area. So if you ever see words like master or main, then you know that you're applying these settings onto the sound as a whole. But if you ever get confused, one way that you can figure out whether a setting is just on one specific sound or for the overall sound is just to isolate one sound or oscillator and play with the setting. So here I have this overall sound and I have these filters here and I have no idea what they're actually affecting. So let's go ahead and isolate oscillator one. And let's take a listen to see if this filter is changing our sound here. So this filter is definitely for our individual sound, but it still could be for our overall sound. We don't know yet. But if I take filter two and I start playing around with it, it's not changing our sound at all. So this is a good clue to tell me that these filters are actually just working on the individual sounds and not for the overall sound. Other than filters, another very easy setting to understand is pitch control. You can find this by looking for the words octave, semitone, sense. Other pitch words that are also common are coarse or fine, where coarse is for big pitch changes and fine is for fine tuning. And this setting will simply just change the pitch of your sound. And again, this works similarly to filtering where we have settings just for individual sounds. You can hear this layer right here was not changing as I played around with the pitch. It's only this layer here that's changing. But we also have other settings for pitch control that affect the overall sound as well. So you can hear this is affecting both of our sounds in this example. So you're going to want to make sure to look out for that. One of my favorite things to do is to detune my layers. So if I go into one oscillator and use the fine tuning to send it one way, and then I go into my other oscillator and turn it the other way, you can get some really cool textures doing this. You can also use pitch to instantly create something harmonic. Lots of presets do this. So with this preset here, you can see that the coarse dial for this oscillator right here is set to plus 700 cents. So if I play a C note on my keyboard, this layer right here that doesn't have any changes made to its pitch control is going to play a C. Whereas if I play a C note on my keyboard using this layer right here, this is actually gonna end up playing a G. Again, because it's pitched up 700 cents, which is seven semitones, which gets us to a G. So far we've covered filters and pitch control. Let's move on to envelopes now. And this is where things might get a little bit less easy to understand. To find the envelope section, you'll commonly see these four letters, ADSR. This stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. 
You might see the full words or partial letters instead, but fundamentally this will allow you to change the shape of your sound. So let's go through these one by one. Attack will control how long it takes for a sound to start playing. So if I set this a bit higher up, You can hear it takes longer for the sound to get to its peak volume, and setting it low means our sound peaks immediately. Next we have decay and sustain, and they work hand in hand. Sustain controls how loud a sound will remain as long as I keep my note held down. So setting this all the way up means that my sound will continue to play at maximum volume as long as I hold down my note. But turning this down results in this sound playing at a lower volume as I hold down my note. You can hear it started off loud and then it got quiet. Turning this all the way down means that I don't get any volume as I hold down my note. Next we have decay and this controls how long it takes for us to get from our peak volume to our sustain level. So right now this sustain is set all the way down. Therefore if I put decay at a low setting, we get a very plucky sound. We hit our peak volume and then we get to our sustain level which is at a zero really quickly. And if I set this at a higher setting, We get a sound that hits our peak level, but then slowly decreases to our sustain level. And obviously we don't have to have our sustain at zero. We can adjust this so our sustain is at a medium level, for example. So here we get a sound that starts off loud and then becomes quieter. And finally, we have the release knob. This controls how long our sound continues to play after I release a note, sort of like it creates a tail. So if I set this to zero, as soon as I let go of my note, the sound stops playing instantly. It has no tail. But let's say I turn up this release. Even after I let go, the sound continues to play. So as you can see, using the ADSR settings are going to be really helpful when making beats. Overall, you can think of it like this. The attack, decay, and release functions are more time-based where they control the different amounts of time it takes to get to certain volumes, and our sustain level controls the volume of our sound, where as long as we hold a note down, it's gonna to continue to play at our sustain level that we set. These settings will be really important in reshaping your sounds to fit your beat. This plugin luckily had a visualizing setting so we can see the shape of our sound. Other plugins will just use faders. These are not as easy to understand visually, but the same principles apply. So that's envelopes covered. The last common effect that we have is modulation. This is probably the most advanced section of your synth and probably the most confusing. What this basically does is it lets you change your settings automatically. Let me show you what I mean. Right now we have this sound with all the settings in place. What modulation does is it can change these settings so they don't just stay in one place. Imagine if you had someone turning one of these knobs for you as you played around with your sound. That's basically what modulation can do for you. For example, let's right click our pitch right here and modulate this setting. Now you'll see we have this white dot going back and forth, and as we play our note, the pitch of our sound is also going back and forth. It's changing based on what this white dot is doing, and we can change how fast our sound gets modulated. So if I go here and change the rate, and we can change the amount that it gets modulated. If I change the depth here, But this type of modulation isn't the only one we're stuck with, and this is when things can get a little bit crazy. Right now we are using LFO modulation, and that's what gives us this shape to our modulation, where we go up and down in this smooth fashion. But there are other shapes that we could use. And even crazier, beyond that there are other types of modulation that we can use. So if I right click and go back into modulation, you can see we have modulation that's based off of LFOs, which we just used, 
modulation based off of envelope shapes, which we just covered before, or I could trigger modulation based off of the velocity of whatever I play on my keyboard, my pitch wheel, or randomization, or steps. So you can imagine the possibilities here. Some plugins let you modulate whatever you want, and you can choose which envelopes or LFOs you want to use to modulate whatever setting, but other plugins will have a pre-designated modulation area. To find these in your synth, look for words like LFO, pitch wheel, or envelope again. What these plugins will do will allow you to create your own shapes, and then you can drag these modulations onto whatever setting you want. Then you control the amount this setting gets modulated. And here's another example of the same approach. Here we have this modulation area where we have envelopes or LFOs. And I can just take this, drag this onto whatever setting I want, and there we go. But other plugins will only give you limited types of modulation where you can only play around with a handful of settings. And like I mentioned, this is probably what ends up being the most confusing part of most plugins. Overall, these modulations aren't absolutely necessary to use. They can offer up a nice layer of detail with your sounds, but it's not gonna be the deciding factor in whether your beat ends up sounding good or bad. And like I said, often this area is gonna be what takes up most of the room in many of your plugins, and it's what also can look the most confusing. But just remember to let this overall flowchart guide you and you should be good. First find the sounds, then what affects the individual sounds, then what affects all the sounds as a whole. This applies to most plugins, there are exceptions, for example FM synths, where the logic of the sound creation is a bit different, but overall this framework can be a way to help you navigate many of the confusing synths that you have in your library. Hopefully this video has helped, if it did, like and subscribe. Head over to betterbeatmaker.com if you want to check out my full online beatmaking course. My free drum kit's available in the description box below, as well as a link to the Discord if you want to join my producer community. Hopefully you had a good time, and if so, I'll see you next week.